It's time for the Hockey Writers Grind Line. A weekly show covering everything Detroit Red Wings. Brought to you by our own iconic top line of Wings writers. Sit back and enjoy the grind. Welcome to the Hockey Writers Grind Line. I'm your host, Kyle Knopf, and today I'm joined by my line mates, Devin Little and Matthew Zator, and we are back after the holiday break. Before we get into it, the grind line is brought to you by our sponsor, Ticket IQ. If you're looking for Red Wings tickets without having to pay those pesky checkout fees, try Ticket IQ. Ticket IQ has zero fees and will save you 10 to 20% versus those other sites like StubHub. Believe me, it's the best out there, and it's nice to know what you're going to spend as the price you see is the price you pay. Plus, Ticket IQ gives each transaction an A through F rating based on how good of a deal it is. So you know, so it takes the guesswork out of ticket buying. Again, that's ticketiq.com. Look for it in the description below or an app download link so you can get started browsing the best deals on tickets today. Also, while you're down there, drop us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay on top of all the best Hockey Writers content. All right, we're going to jump right into it with our one good, one bad from the past two weeks since we were off last week on the holiday break. Matt, going to start with you. What is your good and bad from the past two weeks? Well, um, I'm going to start with something that's going on right now. It's the World Juniors. And uh, Con- Connor Bedard, I mean, this guy he's he's the first overall he's gonna be the first overall pick for a reason i mean no one else is going to take him out like we were talking about shane Wright last year and there's no chance no one else is going to be first overall i mean he's now tied with uh world juniors all-time points uh, for team canada uh probably will or all-time goals not points um he's closing in on that too uh um, goals (laughs) with 14 and he's i mean there's no He's going to hit. He's going to go above it. He's probably going to score in the next game. He's probably going to score another like five or six goals before the end of all this. Um, probably maybe even more. Who knows? Um, but yeah, he's just been amazing. Uh, every game that that he's played, he's he's done something great. I mean, he had seven points in that Latin against Germany and another six against Austria. Yes, they're lesser teams. Um, but he's been doing it all throughout his Team Canada career already. So and he's just going to do it in the NHL uh, for, I don't know who, I mean, uh, Chicago Blackhawks, I think have the best chance of getting him right now. Um, Arizona Coyotes are in there, uh, a bunch of other teams, but whoever gets this guy is just going to get a phenomenal generational player. So that's my good for the week. Um, he's probably going to be my good for next week as well, because he's probably going to be something <laughs> even more. Um, yeah. So Connor Bedard's my good. Uh, my bad is something in Canucks land here in uh, JT Miller. I uh, had a bit of a meltdown, I guess, uh, when Con- Con- Colin Delia, who's uh, the third string of the Canucks right now on goaltender, um, kind of was, he didn't leave the the net, uh, I guess, when JT Miller thought he should have. I uh, started yelling at him very distinctly. Everyone kind of knew what he was doing, kind of getting really frustrated. And to me, that shows a lack of leadership. And uh, so that's my, that's a bad for number of reasons i mean this is not the first time he's gotten um angry with his goaltender uh brighton holpe he was with there was t- a bit with him as well um both kind of getting into it so i mean and then earlier with luke shen too uh, it's it's a it's a bad look uh for miller so um that's my bad uh right now for i mean it's not red wings related but uh a bad for this past week as well yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be Red Wings related, but that is a bad look whenever you have someone that's uh, seen as one of the leaders on your team going off over something what seems so mundane as just not coming out of the net or, uh, you know, not playing a puck or, you know, like, oh, it didn't pass to me. And then so you throw a fit. So it does <laughs> seem childish and immature. Uh, and hopefully, you know, they can get that sorted out because – you know, he's been kind of a key piece to that team this year. Uh, I do agree with the Connor Bedard statements too, Matthew. The guy is, the kid has been absolutely phenomenal and insane and just amazing to watch. And you look at a player like Adam Fantilli, who's a potential top three pick this season as well. And Bedard just makes him 
you know, look very average yeah. when they play with each other or against each other. It's just, it's, it's quite interesting how <laughs> just uh, how much of a general, general, uh, generational talent Bedard <laughs> really is and how, uh, how we're seeing something special, you know, for having another player like that come through so soon. All right, Devin, give us your one good, one bad from this past week. Uh, I think I'm going to kind of do two goods here and a bad. Uh, my uh, my bad is going to be um, the Red Wings falling behind early and falling behind big in their pre, uh, most recent two games. They fell behind 4-0 against the Pittsburgh Penguins, and then they fell behind 5-0 against the Buffalo Sabres. Um now, one of the goods is that they came back and won that game against Pittsburgh, which was awesome, electric. Um, that was just a fun game to, to you know, obviously when you're behind four goals early on in the first period, you're thinking, all right, let's, what else is on TV? So um, to see them come back and win that, that was awesome. But the fact remains, you shouldn't be falling behind by uh, three goals, let alone four or five um, that early on in a game. Um, and then the other good I want to highlight is uh, Joe Valeno, actually. He's riding a five-game point streak right now, five points in five games, two goals in there. Um, and he's doing that while playing, like, the most he's played in that uh, time frame was uh, last night against the Sabres where he played 14-27. So he's producing while not playing, like, you know, high-end minutes. Um, we've talked about how he's, you know, shown chemistry with Berggren, talked about how he really he seems to be taking steps this year. And I think that the fact he's on a five game point streak right now is sort of um, really like proof of the of that fact. So um, good on JV, and uh, um, he's another one of those kids that you're that you were hoping going into the season that would take another step, and it sure seems like that's what he's doing. Uh, you're absolutely right about Joe Valeno. And then another thing is uh, he's still considered a fourth line center, and for someone that's getting 14, 15 minutes a night at the fourth line, like that's amazing. Usually those guys are getting eight, nine minutes a night, uh, but he's getting extra ice time and uh, centering that second line power play. So uh, it's good to see him get rewarded for that. And then for him to continue to produce as well. Um, I think you're right, Devin. There's a lot of th goods that we could pick from this past week. Uh, Verana's back, right? He's back practicing. He's making, or he made his, Grand Rapids debut mm -hmm. game two is actually going on right now. I'm sure you have it on in the background, Devin uh, Perron hit a thousand games. Like you mm -hmm. said, the Pittsburgh comeback, the Tampa Bay game where they dominated uh, down in Tampa Bay, they played really well. Uh, you know, my good, I think is definitely that Pittsburgh game. Uh, my bad also goes with it. That was on Wednesday when I was driving back from my Christmas extravaganza, coming back from Michigan to Maryland uh, and uh, did not see it, but was getting the text from my cousin, who's a big Penguins fan, uh, about <laughs> how uh, we were getting beat up. And I just like <laughs> told my wife, text him, like, I'm glad I can't see it. And then <laughs> five minutes later, she's like, uh, they're on their way back. Uh, so I, I made sure to send him some extra texts after that one. So uh, that, that was also a good. Uh, and then, you know, the bad just starting out slow against Pittsburgh and then that second period against Buffalo, uh, you know, and you're, it's showing some uh, gaps in, in terms of where this team uh, thinks they are and where they actually are right now. And they need to kind of fill those in. Uh, but hey, that's what we're going to talk about next. Right. And Devin, you brought this up quite a bit a few weeks ago, the Christmas benchmark. And it has now passed, and Detroit is on the outside of the playoffs. A big change from only 30 days ago. So is this where they're going to stay for the rest of the season, or do they have another run in them? And Devin, coming to you first, since this is your uh, topic of the last month or so. Well, and case in point, right? Like Thanksgiving, yeah, they were in the playoffs, yeah. looking like they were, they were going to stay there too, but... Uh... Here we are. Yep. A few days after Christmas. And they're not just like just outside of a playoff spot. They're like several points outside of a playoff mm -hmm. spot. They've got games in hand, but even if they won their games in hand, they would still be outside. Still be a point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they're outside of the playoffs at this point. And um again, that's why I say wait till Christmas because any team can start really what can start hot. Any mm -hmm. team can start cold. Um, give it more time to let the craziness and the hot starts and the cold starts even out. 
And then we kind of have a better idea of what's for real, what's for not, and what's not. And mm-hmm. I think that at this point, we kind of have a pretty good idea of who the Detroit Red Wings are this season. Um, they're better than they were last season. They're still making progress. Um, there's still a lot of good players there. And I think that, um, you know, it just kind of goes hand in hand and hand with it. Uh, you should feel confident that this ship is still heading in the right direction, but they're still not there quite yet. Um, I think the question of do they still have another run in them is interesting because um, and we're going to talk about this shortly, but there's a lot of players coming back here soon. You just mentioned Vrana, who's uh, conditioning in Grand Rapids. Uh, Fabry is going to be um, good to go in two days. He's going to be cleared on the first. For Tuesday's coming a couple weeks after that, and Zadina should be cleared after that um, some, somewhere in there as well. So reinforcements are on the way, and um, I know at least three of those four should be good to add some legitimate offense, offense to the lineup. And if you're adding that kind of firepower, that should theoretically lead to more wins, right? So I think that um, this team could have another run in them, but I don't think it's a run that all of a sudden puts them back into this is a playoff team discussion. I think it just kind of um, reinforces the notion that they're a team that's moving in the right direction. Um, I think that, um, you know, a key difference between Thanksgiving and Christmas is that teams like Tampa Bay and Florida were kind of treading water. And now they look like the teams that we expect them to be. And I don't think that's going to, um, I don't think that's going to change. So no matter what runs the Red Wings might have ahead of them, I think that the teams that they need to catch are either too far ahead of them or are now in their stride and they're not going to leave it. So unfortunately, um, even if they do make up some ground, I think that they, uh, they are where they are and I don't think they're going to really move too much. Yeah, you bring up a lot of great points there, Devin. And I do want to touch on a couple of those or add at least my two cents behind uh, off of what you said, but Matt, I want to come to you first. Uh, with that Christmas benchmark now being passed in Detroit on the outside, is this where they're going to stay, or do you see them making another run at a chance for the playoffs this season? Yeah, I agree with a lot what Devin said. I mean, it's tough because now you're you're chasing all these teams that are in the Metro. I mean, the Metropolitan Division is insane. I yeah. mean, the, uh, the three teams that are above them in the wild card are all tied with 44 points. I, uh, you know, and Detroit, like you said, they have games in hand, but even if they win them, they're not there. And, and it's not, and the other teams are just probably going to keep winning or fighting for position um, with them. So, and then, you know, the top teams in the Atlantic are all to where they are usually now. And the Boston Bruins, I take full, I, I, I thought the Bruins weren't going to do well this season. Uh, uh, they are proving me one. completely wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I mean, they're not going to slow down. Toronto looks like they're not slowing down. And Tampa looks like the team now. Um, I mean, they could be caught a guess, but they have 45 points. So, I mean, that's a, quite a few ahead of Detroit. Um, and then Buffalo, I mean, they're, they're tough to gauge. I mean, I don't know what Buffalo yeah. is. They seem to be okay i mean you're looking at their goal differential they're probably the one of the better ones plus 21 yeah i mean i mean buffalo may see, keep winning and bypass the red wings too so i mean it it's so tough i mean and that's i mean the red wings they could go on a run like devin said and actually start winning more games again but the other teams would have to start losing too and yeah. that's and that's tough i mean you know, you're pretty close to that mid-season point now. I mean, Red Wings have played 34 games. The 42 game mark is your is your uh, or 41 game mark 41. is your uh, halfway point. So that's coming up. And usually, when you get to that mid-season, that's usually where it's going to be. And that's why, like Devin said earlier, it was the Christmas benchmark is is a bigger sample size. You're closer to that mid-season when you start to looking at okay, do you buy or sell? And we don't know what the Red Wings are going to do. I mean, they're probably closer to that maybe sell point, um, especially with all the log jam of forwards coming back. So yeah. mm-hmm. uh, we'll yep. talk about that later. But yeah, I, I, I mean, you'd hope that they could go on a bit of a run, but then you get to a point where you're like, do you want them to? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. You want them to get maybe get some uh, better chance of uh, who we talked about at the beginning, Carter Bedard. So <laughs> uh, we'll see. 
Well, I don't quite think they're going to be in the play for Bedard this no. season. I mean, you never know. You never know. And maybe, maybe what? <laughs> uh, there'll be some sort of lottery favorite. If this choice. is the year they finally get lottery luck, you just yeah. Get... <laughs> yeah. yeah, you never know. But I will take it. This is the one year in the next 20. Like, let's fine. Let's do it. Uh <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, you guys both bring up really good points, right? Yeah, you want them to continue to make that hunt, but at what point do you want to also be firmly in that spot where you're selling? So maybe you unload a couple bad contracts or guys that are on one- or two-year deals to, like you said, make more room, but also get more draft picks in the next uh, upcoming drafts, you know? Um, especially if you can get one or two more snaked out of this upcoming one this year, uh, just because of how deep it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so when when is that line that you want to be at that point where you're pushing for uh, selling at the trade deadline? Uh, now, I was one of those guys that was buying into the, the Thanksgiving uh, benchmark and saying they were going to make the playoffs. And, you know, honestly, I do think they're going to end up just a little bit shy, but there's always a chance. And so I'm going to stick with my original prediction, uh, you know, and I'm going to say yes. Uh, and the big reason, because Devin, you mentioned all of those high powered offensive weapons that still are coming back to the wings. Yeah. They're not quite winning the games. They should be winning when those guys were out of the lineup, but getting those guys back could really spark this team and add a little extra oomph to their game that we haven't quite seen uh, and maybe get them just back into the fight for that wild card spot. So I do think they end up uh, just falling a little bit shy of that, but I think we're going to see them actually make a push uh, and and make this uh, race a little bit closer than one might expect heading into the into the final few weeks. So um, yeah, I don't know if that's the easy way to get out of that question. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna take it. So uh, I'm going with the, yeah. Go ahead, Deb. I, I I just have uh, one more thought. I kind of want to throw out there, and it's that I feel like you know, obviously we're not we're not done quite yet. We got one more game to go, but um, I feel like their December has really kind of embodied what this team yeah. is because they've they had two wins against the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's a pretty darn good team. They had that when, uh, when Tampa was getting hot, like you guys both mentioned. Yeah, exactly too. So it's not like they they were getting them when they were down. They were getting them when they were coming up. Yeah. Um, they had that big comeback win against the Pittsburgh Penguins, another team that's, mm. you know, a perennial play. They have the longest playoff streak in the league right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's sandwiched in between these like awesome victories that give you hope. They have a six game losing streak yeah. and they're, and they're against good teams, mind you, they're against Dallas they're against Carolina. Mm. So it's, it's not like they're losing to teams that they shouldn't be losing to, but I just think that it's, it's kind of like the perfect um, like this is who this team is. They can give you those wins that give you hope and they that show that like this team can compete with anybody. But then yeah. when the chips are down and they really need to show up to like, you know, prove they're a playoff team, they just fall short. And well, the losses, and, and, the yeah, they're losing to teams and, like Buffalo and and and, uh, and, and that is and Ottawa. Moves. Yeah. You know, and, and tomorrow I think you know the last game of of 2022 and the last game of December is really gonna be a big you know, kickoff point because Ottawa has been kind of a thorn. I know they've only played them once, but that was kind of a measuring stick game and they kind of got, you know, chased out of the building a little bit. So, uh, and then same with like the Buffalo Sabres being measuring stick type games and they haven't been able to play them a full 60. So, uh, you know, I, tomorrow, uh, today, whenever you're watching, I guess it'll be tonight. uh, The 31st is when uh, this will come out. Uh, but that's going to be a big game against the Senators. And mm-hmm. uh, again, another measuring stick. But I think you're absolutely right, Devin. December has been uh, very quintessential of what the Red Wings have been this season. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's going to lead us to our first rush of the show. Dominic Kubelik had two goals in the last game. Is his quote unquote slump over? Devin, 20 seconds coming to you. Um, yes and no. I think he's kind of a streaky scorer. I think most scorers are, are tend to be streaky. Um, I, I think that it's over in the sense that he's gonna start scoring again, but I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, goes cold again over the course of the season. Excellent. Just in time. Matt, over to you. 20 seconds. 
Yes, I think it is. I mean, whenever you get to a couple goals, it's it's a confidence boost. I think he'll probably get onto a, a bit of a streak now. Excellent. 10 seconds to spare. I love it. Uh, I agree. Yes, I think this is uh, a way for him to kind of break out. Uh, wasn't against the best team, but was against a team that he really needed to score against. All right, Matthew. Will Jakob Verona score in tonight's game uh, for Grand Rapids? And Devin, if you know this answer because you're paying attention, do not cheat. <laughs> I, I, I would say yes. I'll be off okay. honestly. All right, Devin, do you already know? Uh, no, I don't, but I will, I will say that I'm hoping to see him score when I watch him play tomorrow. Okay. Save those goals for Devin. I yes. love it. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to say, you know, he got two shots in uh, his debut. I'm going to say uh, no goal, but he will get an assist. And then he's going to have a hat trick in Devin's uh, new hey, team. Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> All right. All right. Moving along. We're going to take a quick breath and reset the show. This is the grind line. And I am Kyle Knopp here with Devin Little and Matthew Zator. And we're talking Red Wings hockey. Before we get back into it, we want to remind you to sign up for the Morning Skate, the morning hockey newsletter packed with all the best NHL news, rumors, funnies, histories, and more. Sign up today at morningskate.io. All right, moving along. You've mentioned them. We're talking about the firepower coming back to the Red Wings lineup. We got Jakob Verano. We got Robbie Fabry. We got Philip Zadina and... Tyler Bertuzzi, all returning in the next couple of weeks. But how are the Red Wings going to make room for them? And uh, Devin, let's start with you. How would you make room for these four forwards coming back to the Red Wings lineup? Uh, sell, sell, sell is what I would do. <laughs> um, but, uh, Who are you selling? <laughs> and that... <laughs> is the question. Um, well, first and foremost, there are two moves that I would make that would clear two spots, and then things would start getting dicey. One, I would send Elmer Soderblom back down to Grand Rapids. Um, he was sent down, I think it was earlier this month, um, and it was basically just like a conditioning thing because he had missed time. Um, but I also think that even before then, um, I think it was kind of, it, it seemed like he 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 could use some time down there to... Uh, work specifically on his defensive game um he's you know he's got his god-given gifts that like no one's going to take from him and he's and he's show he earned a roster spot but um you know as the games went on um early on in the season i think it just kind of showed that he's 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 still got some work to do he's very much still a, a young player and i think that um he just would be best suited to you know play top six minutes in grand rapids and then he'll come back up after the trade deadline because i'm sure they'll there will be room for him at that point mm -hmm. Um, and he doesn't have to go through waivers. So easy. Yeah. Um, next one I would do is I would decide what goalie I'm going to keep behind who. So whether that's Nadelkovich or Helberg, um, I know that, um, there's that looming threat that, uh, Helberg would be claimed on waivers because he's been claimed every single time he's been on waivers this season. But, um, whether I'm waving Ned or I'm waving Helberg, I'm sending one of them down because having three goalies is not ideal. Um, and especially when you've got this many guys coming back, that's just an easy way to open up another roster spot. And then that is where things get dicey because then you still got two more spots to open up and um, you don't have them. So at this point, um, I think I've mentioned this on the show before, but I'd be taking calls on Pew Suter. Um, he's kind of been like all around the lineup because he doesn't necessarily have a home in the lineup. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think when you've got that, I think he's an easy player to you know offer off and see if, see if there's another team that could find a home for him. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you could get, you know, not, maybe not even a second round pick, but you could probably get a third round pick for Pew Suter. Um, maybe you could get something nice for Pew Suter is what I'm saying, not like a seventh round pick. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would also look at um, potentially trading Adam Ernie. Um, I think that he, he adds a good sense of physicality, especially now that they don't have Giovanni Smith. Um, but I also think that, um, the way the Red Wings are playing this season, uh, they're trying to play with the puck and they're trying to play fast. They're trying to play, they're trying, trying to play tenacious, but not physical, if that makes sense. So I think that they just they don't need an Adam Ernie. It's nice to have one, but I think that if you have to choose between having Robbie Fabry in the lineup or having Adam Ernie, 
I know who I'm picking. <laughs> um, and outside of that, um, I, I think long story short, what I would do is I'd be working the phones a lot and I'd be saying, you know, I'd be trying to find a match because, um, you know, it's not, it's not like this is a surprise, right? This has mm-hmm. been a thing for pretty much since the season started. So um, I, I, making calls let's get a deal done we can get it we can uh you know get you this player and have you acclimated have that player acclimated to your team um well before the playoffs start mm-hmm. we don't have to wait to the deadline to get this done let's do it now help me help you that sort of thing and then um move the guys down that makes sense to move down i i i know that like a really easy way to make a spot is to send bergeron down um for the same reasons that Soderblom can go down he doesn't have to go through waivers and all that but good Lord has Bergen looked phenomenal mm. in the NHL. And I just, I have a really hard time stomaching the thought that he would go back down to the AHL. If he was kind of just so, so in the NHL, then yes, yeah. down, it'll mm-hmm. come right back up, but he's been great. Like he's mm. been great. And I, I, I would worry that I would almost send the wrong message. To mm. send yes. I know how, yeah. It's a business. And I know he's mature enough to understand that. But I think that at some point when you have success, you have to be rewarded for it. And, and he's sending him back to the AHL is not a reward. He, he's still young enough to where that could send the wrong message, no matter yeah. uh, how much that he says he understands. Uh, it could still rub the wrong way. And that's not what you want to do, right? You don't want to yeah, uh, yeah. mess with that growth. So um, I want to follow up with something with you, Devin, before I bring it over to Matthew. I agree with a, a ton of those moves. Uh, you actually hit the names that I was going to suggest moving as well. Uh, I'm sure Matthew's going to, to uh, elaborate on that as well. Uh, but want to ask you this question since you brought it up. You're waving one of your backups. <laughs> Who are you more upset at losing on the waiver wire? Nadelkovic <laughs> or Helbert? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad you asked because I I know I'm going to say the unpopular thing here. I would be upset if they lost Nadelkovich. And the reason why is because um this is going to be an answer in of itself, but uh Ned is 5 years younger than uh Helberg. I believe in Ned's ability to be an NHL goalie more than I believe in Helberg's because Ned has already played almost 100 games in the NHL. Helberg has played 9 and he's 5 years <laughs> older. Um, I don't think that, you know, we, goalies develop weirdly and, you know, some players can just blossom out of nowhere in their thirties, but it's abnormal. I don't think Magnus Helberg all of a sudden became an NHL goalie while he was over in the KHL. I just don't, I think he's a phenomenal option as a third string goalie, but unfortunately waivers aren't letting him be that for the Red Wings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also to that point, um, you know, we can say, you know, I don't need to elaborate on how, um much Ned has struggled this season we all know the numbers we know you know the situation there but it's not like Helberg is playing lights out when he's played for the Red Wings Mm -hmm. um going even going back including his one game he played last year with the Red Wings he has got a 3.02 goals against average and a 0.887 save percentage that doesn't give me confidence Mm -hmm. yeah point blank it doesn't um he had that really strong 40 minutes when he took over for Husso against Pittsburgh Good for him. 40 minutes doesn't tell me anything. And plus, when he was in goal, the Red Wings were controlling the rest of the game. So yeah. it's not like they were really leaning on him to like keep them in the game. Um, and then his other starts he's had this season with the Red Wings, he stopped 18 of 21 against the Minnesota Wild. Average mm-hmm. at best. Mm-hmm. And then he played yesterday against the Buffalo Sabres. Now the team played atrocious in front of him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but he still had five goals scored against him. And it was like 29 shots or something like that. And there were a couple in there that I think an NHL goalie should stop. Mm. And to that point, when Ned has played, the team hasn't been helping him a lot either. Mm. So um, I just... I think that you could rehabilitate Ned into being at least a backup. And we know Mm -hmm. that he can be more than that too. Um, I think that if he went on waivers, a team like Chicago or even Buffalo could Mm. claim him, you know, get his confidence going and then flip him for a third round pick or something. And then the Red Wings don't get that. Mm -hmm. Like at the very least, you know, you're, you could get something for Ned if he gets going. Whereas Helberg, I I don't think, I, I just think he's not, 
that valuable. Like obviously he, gets, he keeps getting claimed. And I think it's because he's a great depth goalie. Mm. But as you're like your backup goalie, I just don't think that's what Helberg is. Yeah. And here's the thing. If Detroit feels that Helberg is the way they want to go, at least for this season or even a short spell and they try to wave Ned, I'd rather them see them try and move him and get something for him uh, than just potentially lose him to waivers. Cause I think if, if you know Helberg's going to get snapped up on waivers, you got to assume Ned's getting snapped up on waivers. Absolutely. And like you said, mm-hmm. probably by Chicago, probably by a Buffalo or Arizona who could use, yeah. it's, you know, it, 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 and it's tricky because he's got a $3 million cap hit. So it's not like, you know, there aren't like, it's not like every team could afford to claim him, but the teams that could afford to claim him are the ones that would be interested in claiming mm-hmm. yeah. him. Yeah. 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 And for, you know, if you really believe in him, you're going to find a way to clear 3 million. It's not that much. It's not yeah. overly, you know, awful to deal with if you're, if it's the right situation. So it'll be interesting to see what the wings decide to do. Uh, but that is one way to create some roster space. Uh, like I said, I don't want to dwell on this too much because Devin, you, you, you had a great idea and picked off most of the names of my list. So Matthew, I'm coming over to you. Rana, Fabry, Zadina, Bertuzzi, all returning in the next couple of weeks. How do you, as the Red Wings GM, make room for that? Well, Devin, yeah, Devin kind of hit on a lot of the guys that I would have do. And on Helberg, there's also a reason why he's been put on waivers all these yeah. by all these teams yeah. again, too, because he hasn't blown their, the doors off and said, well, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, I mean, yes, he's being claimed, but that's because like Devin said, he's a good depth goalie. I mean, he, he's serviceable. He can get in the net. He can give you a chance, but he's not a guy that are like, okay, we, we, we have to keep him. We got to make sure that he's not mm-hmm. going anywhere. They're putting him on waivers. They have a, they know that he may get claimed and they don't seem to care. So, I mean, there's, there's a reason there for that. Um, I think the Dalkovich does have a lot more value, um, out there for a trade, um, he probably will get claimed on waivers because, you know, some teams that have a lot of cap space and then think, oh, we can make him more valuable and then flip him for a, yeah, maybe even a second round pick. You never know. I mean, you can get him up yeah. to a, a point or they'll be like, okay, now he's our goaltender. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I mean, it's flip him and half half the rider. salary. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, yeah. that could easily be enough value for a second round for a team looking, you know, like Colorado. Maybe that's if, uh, 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 Georgia is still, yeah. yeah, still down, and yeah. you know, they need someone else. I mean, and Alfitch is young. I mean, he's got so much. I mean, he he's not even hit that point where you're like, well, this is a goaltender he's going to be for the rest yeah. of his career. I mean, goalies they can hit at 30 years old and be the best. So, yeah, you never know. Um, yeah, a lot of those moves, I think, I don't think Bergeron should go anywhere. I think he should stay in the NHL. I think he's proved that he's earned his spot. Uh, Soderbloom, I think he's had some flashes, um, more early on in the season. He's been really good, but uh, yeah, he can go down, still develop. Um, he was a surprise. He made the lineup in the first place. Yeah. So yeah, he has been playing well though, right? He's got five points in the last five yeah. games, I believe. I mean, so he's yeah. something, I think it's something like he's, that, but. It, and he's a unicorn, right? And he's yeah. a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think out of the two, you know, he's going to be the guy that understands getting sent down a little more uh, yeah. than, you know, like you said, he's got more he needs to develop still, uh, that defensive game down there. Whereas, you know, uh, Bergeron was uh, pretty much developed as much as he could last year and now needs to develop at the NHL level. Yeah. And then trades, I mean, yeah, you're going to be doing some, I think the Red Wings are doing a lot of that uh, by the, around the deadline. Uh, they got some assets. I don't think they're going after those, the Bo Horvats, the Brock Bessers, the uh, Alex Lafreniere, who's now out there as a, as a target. Um, I heard that the Red Wings could potentially be interested in him. Um, yeah, it, it, I mean, I don't think they're going after those big fish because they have to give up big things to get those guys. Um, and you're not solving the problem. You're just adding another guy. So <laughs> even if you do trade one of them, I mean, you're still <laughs> replacing with someone else. So, I mean, you're yeah. still going to have the problem. Um, I, I think may, they may I trade a defenseman. Jake Wallman's looked really good since he's come back. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they may, and then 
we know how Matt has looked uh, as well. I mean, they've got mm-hmm. a little bit of a log jam on defense now, I think. Um, yeah. So uh, I think there's going to be some moves. and uh, But Devin hit on a lot of the things that I would have said. So I'm not going to dwell on it too much. <laughs> yeah, I, I think absolutely. Uh, we're, we're looking Pew Suter and, uh, and um, Adam Ernie is probably the two likely to be moved to make room, whether that's waivers, whether that's, uh, you know, trades, whatever that might be. I think those are the two names that really pop off the page uh, for all of us here. So uh, let so, us know in the comments below. I'm oh, sorry. I don't mean to. Uh, no, no, you're, you're good. There, you're no. good. I'm, I'm jumping in here. Um, I just real quick. I know we're running a little bit longer than we intended to, but I, I both of you, I'm really curious. Um, would you move Sunquist? He's on his. He's on the last year of his deal. He's very much one of those typical mm-hmm. guys you would see moved at the deadline. So As it stands right now, would you move Sonny? His, his name kept popping up in my head as I was going through their their roster, right? Because like you said, last year the deal you could get something for him. Uh, he's almost a unicorn type too, big guy, mm-hmm. power forward. A lot of teams could use him. So I would say if there's a good offer on the table, absolutely. But I really like what he's brought to the Red Wings. I really like. Uh, that compliment that he he gives um, and that size and that power because we have a lot of young skill or little little skill guys and for him to be a big skill guy you know kind of like Soderbloom and if Soderbloom gets sent down then you need to have a Sunquist mm-hmm. type uh, so I I would say if you're doing it in terms of making room for the four we talked about plus keeping Soderbloom up then yeah. Absolutely, that's probably the right move to move do. But uh, without Soderbloom in the lineup, I'd say you have to keep Sunquist. I I agree. I think Sunquist has some value to this team. I think he's in that age range where you're like you don't want to get rid of him. Um, yeah. And where they are, where the Red Wings are in the development of the team, I think he fits that. Um, but yeah, if a team goes and says, "Oh yeah, we're going to trade this guy," he's more valuable than him. Yeah, you do go for it because that's where you're going as well. So. Um, I think there has to be the right deal to trade him because I think yeah. he does have a lot of value to this team. Absolutely. Look at Devin sending us off on a mini rush. <laughs> I yeah. like it. I like it. Well, let us know below in the comments uh, how you, as the GM of the Red Wings, would make room for the players returning from injury. All right. What should the Red Wings New Year's resolution be? Matthew, coming over to you first. Ah, uh, I mean, the, I, I want to focus in on a player. Um, I say have we got Maurice, Maurice Sider to start turning it back into what he was in his rookie season. I mean, he's been okay. But uh, if they could get him back to that 50-point guy, um, that's a resolution I would want to, say, to have uh, <laughs> for the new year, to have him look more like him um, or or try to help him become back to that and we talked about in the last episode of getting in the right partner and the right situations i think um that's my new year's resolution for the writings to have more insider become that uh not saying he's not that franchise defenseman anymore but he has to start looking more like him again yeah i i agree and i believe that was either that was the red wings either uh um New Year's resolution or Christmas wish list in the morning skate uh not too long ago uh, either this week or last week. So uh, I, I wasn't the one that wrote it, but I certainly agreed with it when I edited it. So. All right, Devin, I want to get your thoughts on what should the Red Wings New Year's resolution be? Well, what's funny is, is that my, my initial intent was to um, go off about the goalies here. <laughs> but uh, you you teed me up for it a bit early, so <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yes, yes, and also real quick too. Uh, in one of my fantasy leagues, I just recently dropped more at Cider because, as you say, Matt, he hasn't been the uh, the guy who you know won the Calder Trophy last season, and I know it's going to come back to bite me. I just know it. Well, no, I, I definitely I, hope it happens. No, I, I mean, yeah, no, for real though. I mean, listen, I, I hope so too, but like also. Oh man. Um, <laughs> it just had to happen. Anyways, uh, their resolution, in my opinion, I'm going to kind of go in the same vein with cider, um, is to get Lucas Raymond going a little bit. Um, it's not like he's like struggled super hard. He's got eight goals and 20 points this season. So that's good for 
um, just shy of a 50 point season, which is right around where he was last year too. But I think that's kind of the point is that he is doing basically what he did last season. And we were kind of hoping that he would take a step Mm. forward. Right. Um, So I think for, you know, what the resolution should be is to get him to start making progress. Um, You know, I'm not going to say another 50 point season is bad, especially when we're talking about a second year player. Um, But for the type of player that we all think he can be, um, I want to see him push towards 60 points this season. Mm, I want to see him, um, you know, be a a continual threat um, on the power play. I want to see him. um, I don't know. There's been too many games this year where he's kind of invisible and you almost kind of forget that he played in it. And that wasn't the case last season. He, he, even if he wasn't scoring, he was getting assists. And if he wasn't getting assists, he was still creating chances. And I don't think he's done that um, as regularly as he, um, this season, as he did last season, even though his point total suggests that he's just basically having the exact same season. Mm. Yeah. Don't go back and look past at past episodes because there's potential that someone on this panel said that, Lucas Raymond would be a point per game player this year. So uh, let's not go back and throw that at us because uh, you know, that would be awful. So uh, I'm going to keep in the same vein with all of you guys. And I say the Red Wings New Year's resolution should be to get Medelkovich back on track. Yes. Uh, yes. Whether they keep him as the 1A, 1B tandem with Huso, uh, make him a true number two, or decide to move him. All of those are going to be a easier to decide on which of those happen if he plays better, and b if it is the latter, his value goes up if he mm-hmm. is playing uh, much better. And I think just for his confidence, he's a young goaltender. We've discussed this enough, uh, and he has a chance to bounce back and still be a very good goaltender in his career. Uh, but it's going to come with a confidence boost, whether that's a change of scenery or just getting his game back with the Red Wings. I would love to see that happen. So uh, that's my Red Wings New Year's resolution. Again, let us know below in the comments what you think the Red Wings are most in need of in 2023. All right, we're going to go off to our final rush. And I'm going to come to Devin first. What? Oh, hold on. Let me pull up the timer. (laughs) This is a fun one because the game or the game, this show, this episode is coming out on. New Year's Eve, and on New Year's Eve, the Red Wings have a game. So, Devin, what are the keys to the Red Wings earning a victory over the Senators tonight? Uh, not getting in their own way, playing, you know, staying out of the box, not um, feeling the heat of uh, coming off of that ugly loss against mm-hmm. the Sabres, and honestly, just controlling the game. Um, if, if they play their game and play the way that they, you know, want to play this season, they will win this game. Excellent. Oh, I got a little beep on this too. Uh, I don't know if you I don't know if you heard that, but I heard it in my ears. Uh, all right. Matt, keys to the success against the senators. Go. I uh, pretty much the same. I mean, stay out of the box and make sure that you're not doing what they did against Buffalo. I mean, <laughs> Ottawa can do it to you too. I mean, they've got some mm-hmm. good offense. They've been playing pretty well. So um, and get good goaltending because they didn't haven't gotten that in the last few games. Sorry, I didn't give you a countdown at the end. Oh, oh okay. Um, yes, I agree. Uh, I think also coming out fast and with urgency, uh, we haven't seen it in the last couple of games. Like, Devin, you said, they got down against Pittsburgh. They got down against uh, Buffalo. Only one of those they were able to recover from. Let's not start that way again. Get after them early. Get after them often. And come out ready to play. All right uh thoughts on red savage at the world junior championship go matthew i love red savage so he's he's doesn't matter i mean he's played pretty well uh throughout the game so um hopefully he can get uh i don't want him to get a gold medal because canada's supposed to do that <laughs> but uh <laughs> uh he he's played pretty well <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i can't agree with that there sir but all right. <laughs> kevin red savage world juniors go our resident canadian does it again anyways <laughs> um yeah no uh he's doing great i i think he's playing red uh, red savage type of game and that's exactly what you'd expect from him um go red white and blue 
and there was more I was going to say, but we're out of time. So <laughs> <laughs> with two seconds to spare, I love it. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I think he's, like you said, been playing great. He's been playing his game. He's been a pretty big catalyst for the U S team. Uh, they bounced back well after that loss against Slovakia and excited to see what they do tonight, New Year's Eve, when you're watching this, uh, against, uh, Finland. I forgot who they played for a second. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I was going to say Sweden. I'm like, nope, that's Canada. All <laughs> right. Well, if we still need to convince you after our first plug, sign up for the Morning Skate, the morning hockey newsletter delivered to your inbox Monday through Friday for free. Stay up to date. Stay up to date on all the World Junior Championship news, and also find out if your favorite team has a New Year's resolution that's mentioned. Make sure you sign up today at MorningSkate.io for free delivery to your inbox. That's it for this edition of the Grind Line from all of us here at the Hockey Writers and our team here on the Grind. We'll see you next week.